On February 27, 1942, as the Japanese prepared for the invasion of Java Island after a long streak of victories, the Allied forces, led by Dutch Rear Admiral Karl Dorman, led a desperate attempt to intercept the enemy transport ships. In contrast to previous battles, this time the Japanese and the Allied fleets were closely matched, and if the Allies were going to send the Japanese back, it had to be now. As the fleets clashed in the middle of the Java Sea, each attempt to reach the Japanese transports was quickly repelled by the enemy escorts. Allied firepower turned out to be much inferior, with their torpedoes struggling to reach their targets, while the Japanese torpedoes sank one ship after another, traveling at high speed while remaining completely undetected. When the remaining Allied forces withdrew, they were quickly intercepted by Japanese ships, and another brutal torpedo exchange ensued, taking doormen and hundreds of sailors to the bottom of the sea. Only two Allied ships survived to tell the tale. Little did they know that they had just faced off against the most powerful torpedo in the world, a groundbreaking pure oxygen-powered warhead, the Japanese Type 93. Leveling the playing field. As the Imperial Japanese Navy set out to conquer the Pacific, they soon realized that they would be hard-pressed to overcome the American Navy's might. Their fleets were not only smaller in numbers, but they also had smaller ships in contrast to the colossal U.S. destroyers, battleships, and aircraft carriers. If they wanted to succeed, they needed a way for smaller ships like cruisers and submarines to reliably bring down U.S. battleships and carriers. The only solution was using torpedoes. Japan needed to develop the fastest and most devastating one known to man to defeat the U.S. Pacific Fleet. The Imperial Japanese Navy found inspiration in the 24.5-inch Mark I torpedo, an influential British oxygen-enriched weapon that ditched the conventional air tank used for combustion processes in exchange for a tank filled with oxygen-enriched air, thus making the device's power output a significant advantage over other naval projectiles of its kind. Still, the Japanese wanted to take the technology a step further by using not only an air tank with more oxygen, but a pure oxygen tank to make their torpedo up to five times faster and with greater range than anything ever built. The task would not be easy. Compressed oxygen is highly volatile and extremely dangerous to handle, requiring lengthy research and development, not to mention additional training for the warship's torpedo men to guarantee safe and adequate usage. The Japanese engineers would learn the dangers of handling compressed oxygen the hard way during early development at the beginning of the 1930s, as numerous tests resulted in devastating explosions and the loss of many scientists when the pure oxygen reacted violently to many of the lubricants inside the torpedo. Another major obstacle resulted from starting the torpedo engine, as it was then that the propulsion system was the most unstable and highly prone to accidents. Furthermore, it would be when the torpedo would be the closest to Japanese ships, and the risk of damaging them was considerable. Fortunately for the Japanese Navy, the engineers eventually realized that by starting the torpedo's engine with regular compressed air, and then progressively switching to pure oxygen, the problem of accidental explosions inside their own ships could be overcome. This achievement proved a colossal breakthrough. From then on, the design was treated as a top-secret weapon inside the Japanese military, with only a few selected individuals knowing about the torpedo's true nature. To conceal the technology from the ship's crew and any potential enemy, the oxygen tank was labeled as a secondary air tank, and everyone else, including the torpedo crews that fired the weapons, had no idea that it was a pure oxygen projectile. An engineering marvel. The unprecedented torpedo was named after the year of its official development start, 1933, or according to the Japanese imperial calendar, 2593. It would later be dubbed by the Allies as the Long Lance. Its entire design and specifications were created to take the utmost advantage of pure oxygen technology. Due to the increased power output, the torpedo would turn out to be massive in size, weighing about 6,000 pounds, while carrying an explosive warhead of over 1,080 pounds. In comparison, 
The American Mark 14 torpedo used during World War II weighed half as much as the Type 93, while carrying a significantly smaller explosive payload, and had a firing range of barely 5 miles while moving at 35 miles per hour. In contrast, Type 93 had an operating range of over 25 miles while dashing at speeds of 41 miles per hour. The Japanese torpedo wasn't just the one with the most range, speed, and explosive power, it was also the stealthiest in the world. In the absence of the passive nitrogen produced by conventional air tanks, and the emission of significantly less exhaust gas made only from highly soluble carbon dioxide, Type 93 showcased a drastic reduction in the telltale bubble trails left by most torpedoes at the time. The reduced gas exhaust meant that the Type 93 did not leave the iconic torpedo wake that sailors trained to spot, making the Japanese Long Lance the fastest, most devastating, and hard-to-detect torpedo in the world. And to ensure that no leaks of the highly volatile pressurized oxygen occurred, the oxygen tank was made from a single sheet of steel, sealed from the inside with a specially made joint regulator valve preventing reverse flow. All of this meant that the groundbreaking torpedo required thorough maintenance, while ships equipped with Type 93 torpedo launchers needed an oxygen generator system to use it. The Long Lance in Combat The first Type 93 ready ships were deployed by the Imperial Japanese Navy in late 1935. Their naval doctrine would highly benefit from the advantages of the Long Lance, as it was centered on raiding more significant fleets and striking them with torpedoes, then withdrawing before the larger vessels could counterattack. The Japanese fleets had encountered severe difficulties in the past, as they would have to get close to enemy ships to effectively fire their torpedoes. But as they began to switch to the Type 93, they found that they could effectively fire while staying well outside the range of the enemy vessels. The Long Lance's raw power and range also played a pivotal role in the Imperial Japanese Navy's success during the early stage of the Pacific Campaign. When the Japanese first debuted the torpedo against Allied forces in 1942, the opponents were taken by surprise at the novel technology, not knowing what to make of it on many occasions. Japanese destroyers and cruisers could quickly launch their torpedoes from over 22,000 yards at the unwary Allied warships attempting to close to gun range, with the Allies mistakenly believing that Japanese torpedoes would have to be fired from less than 11,000 yards as usual. What's more, even as the Allies were hit by Japanese torpedoes when they were clearly outside their old range, they assumed the projectiles had been fired by undetected submarines operating in sync with the surface warships. On other occasions, stray long lances struck ships at a much longer range than their intended targets, leading the Allies to suspect that their boats had been mined. For many months, Allied ships continued to be decimated by the mighty long lance, without their officers realizing what was happening. An unexpected turnaround. In 1943, after the capture of an intact Japanese warship, the Allies finally learned of the existence of pure oxygen-powered torpedoes. But for all of its impressive features, the Type 93 was not free of faults, and it was more likely to detonate due to shock than a compressed air torpedo. As soon as the Allies learned about the Long Lance, they began to use this flaw to their advantage. Using their often superior airborne firepower, Allied ships would drop bombs on Japanese ships to make their Type 93 torpedoes detonate inside the hull and sink the vessel from within. Consequently, Japanese captains had to constantly decide whether to jettison the torpedoes to prevent them from being detonated during an encounter. In one instance, the heavy cruiser Chikuma jettisoned her Type 93s just before she was hit by bombs from several U.S. Navy dive bombers at the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands. The same Samar engagement saw the heavy cruiser Suzuya sunk by the detonation of her Type 93 torpedoes when a near-miss bomb explosion set off the torpedoes in the starboard tube mounts. The resultant fire is propagated to other long lances nearby, eventually sinking the ship. In a surprising turn of events, the Type 93 torpedoes were turning out to be as lethal to the Japanese as they were to the Allies. During the latter years of the war, the advantages of Type 93 were greatly diminished as naval battles focused more and more on airstrikes. 
and Japanese captains getting rid of their long lances for fear of getting destroyed by them also became a prominent reason for their gradual ineffectiveness. Still, during 1942 and 1943, the long lance proved a devastating and unprecedented wonder weapon that allowed the Japanese to face off against much more prominent fleets and come out victorious, while the Allies were left none the wiser. In total, 23 Allied warships were sunk due to Type 93 hits, 11 cruisers, 11 destroyers, and one fleet aircraft carrier. 13 of these were solely destroyed by a Type 93. Even after it became less effective as the war progressed, the mighty Long Lance had left its mark in the history of warfare. Thank you for watching our video. Do you think the Allies underestimated Japanese naval technology? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you don't miss a single video. Also, subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels for more exciting history-inspired content. Stay tuned.